Hi and welcome along to Transfer Daily, uh, the show where we take a look at the players that have been linked with a summer move to Arsenal. And as you know, every day there's always loads of players that have been linked. Um, I'm going to kick off today with a player that has been getting linked with Arsenal um, for a few weeks now. Even before the season finished, we were being told that this guy is uh, on Arsenal's radar. Last week, we were told that his agent um, was in attendance at the cup final and uh, after the cup final he had um he went and he spoke to the arsenal representatives about a move and the name of the player is arturo vidal now vidal we've we've known about him for a long time he, he's a he's a top top player box to box midfielder um full of energy you know he's from chile same country of course as alexis sanchez his agent in fact is the same agent as Alexis, and he's just an awesome player. I mean, I mean, he's been one of the players that have been instrumental in um, Juventus's success. Juventus, of course, in the Champions League final, and um, you know, Vidal is a player that Arsene Wenger has admired for a very long time. He would be able to settle in to Arsenal very quickly if they were to buy him, because of course he would have his. Um, partner there in Alexis they're very good friends by the way and he would be able to help him to settle into London and it really does seem to make sense um Juventus uh looking to probably offload a couple of players at the end of the season so that they can bring more players in that's the way they kind of operate at the moment and they get a lot of money for him you know there's speculation that the valuation is something around the 28 to 29 million pounds mark so could this be a deal that could happen? Or was Vidal's agent just at the cup final to watch Alexis Sanchez, who is also um, one of his clients? We really don't know. But this rumour has been circulating, circulating around for a while. Remember, Arsene Wenger said, when asked about Vidal about a week ago, he said, listen, we, we've got no interest in Vidal. We're not chasing Vidal at the moment. Um, that was before the cup final. He was never going to mention any player that he's linked to and, you know, destabilise the team before the cup final. Um, whether he, you know, is looking at Vidal or not, we really don't know. But Vidal, as I said, you know, real hardcore player, would be that player that will help to provide that spine in the team, getting linked with Arsenal. And of course, you know, many people see him as a player that could play in that sort of defensive mid midfielder role. Um, but Vidal, very, very, very heavily linked with a move to Arsenal. Another defensive midfielder that uh, yesterday seems to have uh, thrown his hat into the ring is uh, Victor Wanyama. Now, Wanyama, uh, yesterday he appeared on um, Kenyan TV. And on Kenyan TV, of course, he's from Kenya. On Kenyan TV, he said that he'd love to play for Arsenal. When he asked about Arsenal, he said, listen, I would love to play for Arsenal. Again, a player who's had a very good season. Uh, he's been an outstanding player since he was at Celtic, moved to Southampton, has slotted in perfectly there. Big, imposing, no-nonsense holding midfielder. Maybe not the best on the ball, but when it comes to breaking up play, when it comes to sort of providing that spine down the middle... Wanyama definitely can do that. And he's still young. He's only 23 years of age. Would offer excellent competition to a, a player like Francis Cochran. Would also be the sort of player that would come in there and probably wouldn't be moaning if... I, I'm not going to say he wouldn't moan if he didn't start. But maybe wouldn't moan as much as, say, someone like a Vidal, for instance. If Vidal came and Vidal wasn't starting every week, he might be on the moan up. He might say, listen, I came here to play football every week. Whereas Wanyama would be really, really overjoyed to be playing Arsenal and would buy in probably easier to the whole system that is there at Arsenal of rotation. However, it's the player himself saying that he would like to come to Arsenal. There's no indications yet from um, the football club that they want Wanyama. Apparently, they, have a, they are admirers of Wanyama. They have looked at him in the past but at this stage, it's Wanyama literally with uh, the old-fashioned come and get me plea, <laughs> as the newspapers always put it, that he's put out there. 
it gets me on to um, Schneidlin because Morgan Schneidlin, of course, teammate of Wanyama. And as I said, they both formed a great partnership at Southampton this season. It's really gone cold on the Schneidlin thing. Doesn't look like Arsenal seem to be showing as much interest. You know, I mean, at the start of the uh, January transfer window, we were being told that, you know, this is a shoe in for the summer, that Arsenal's number one target literally is Morgan Schneidlin. They're going to go and they're going to bring him in. But then Cochrane came along and Cochrane's been so successful. Are Arsenal now sort of having second thoughts on it? We're being told that Morgan Schneidlin himself prefers a move to Manchester United. Is that true? Um, but it seems to have gone a little bit sort of colder on Schneidlin. Wenger again, an admirer, would like to bring Schneidlin in, we were told, but it's gone very cold. So is Schneidlin going to be that player that um, Arsene Wenger is going to bring in? It's going to be very interesting to see which home, holding midfielder, if any, that Wenger brings in. And of course, we've been talking for a couple of days about Jeffrey Kondogbia. All over the papers now for the past couple of the day, a couple of days that Kondogbia is the player that Arsenal are really looking at, really, really interested in. Um, we went over him yesterday, young defensive midfielder, um, played very well against Arsenal when we played against Monaco. The price I'm being told is that that is the one of the areas that is a sticking point. That price that Monaco would be seeking about up to £25 million is a very, very hefty price for Kondogbia, which Arsenal feel that is too much money for um, a player that is still a talent. He's still an up-and-coming player. He, he's, you know, he's just he's getting into the French team, but he's still an up-and-coming player. He's not an, an established um, defensive midfielder yet. Um, and Arsenal, I think, are looking at it and thinking, well, you know what, that price is a bit high for this guy. So that seems to be the sticking point with Kondogbia. But Arsenal it would appear are definitely interested in bringing Jeffrey Kondogbia to the club. Strikers now. Um, there's been a report in Gazzetta della Sport over there in Italy that Arsenal have actually bid, um, what, what, how much is the price? 40 million euros, we're being told. Arsenal have bid for Gonzalo Higuain. Um, Higuain, of course, considered by many to be a world-class striker. He replaced Cavani, remember, at um, Napoli. And, and he's done very well since he's gone in there. He's, he's scored the goals. He, you know, he's, he's been a hero to the fans over there. We're being told 40 million euros is uh, what Arsenal um, have bid for Napoli. Not sure if I believe that. 50 million euros, though, however, is what the president of Napoli says. He won't even talk to anybody unless they offer 50 million euros. I'm sorry, I just think that that price, I can't see Arsenal paying 50 million euros for Gonzalo Higuain. I'm not even sure if they bid the 40 million, but those are the reports from Gazzetta della Sport, big um, media outlet over there in Italy, that Arsenal have bid for Higuain. And certainly if Higuain came into Arsenal, he'd be a different type of striker to Giroud. He's a, he's a goal scorer. And he's a striker that's played at world-class levels uh, for both for Argentina. I mean, remember, a lot of times for Argentina, he keeps um, some of the more established, what you would say, established players like Aguero, like um, Tevez, out of the team. So, you know, he, that shows you that he is quality. Although he didn't have the greatest of World Cups, um, missing a couple of chances. But he is a quality, quality player. Um, and... We're being told today that Arsenal are putting a bid for him, but we're going to have to wait and see on that. And another player, I knew that this link was going to happen sooner or later, but the link now has come. Arsenal getting linked to the Colombian international, Carlos Backer. Carlos Backer, of course, who plays for Sevilla. He won the um, Europa League. He scored the winning goal in the Europa League. Scored two goals in that game, Europa League last week, um, where Sevilla um, beat Dnipro. 20 years of 28 years of age. That's the again, you know, a lot so a lot of players seem to be around about that age at the moment, these sort of top players. But one thing about this guy, he's got an excellent goal scoring record um for Sevilla over the past couple of seasons. I mean, had it not been for um Ronaldo and Messi's crazy goal scoring records in um Spain, I mean he would really be standing out because he bangs in goals season after season backer. 
And um, Arsenal have apparently been scouting Baka. They're, they're interested in Carlos Baka. We've been told that the price for Carlos Baka will be around about um, £21 million, pounds, which that's not too bad. But again, it's the age, 28. I've drawn this parallel before when speaking about um, players of that sort of age when you buy them. You've got to think of the business that Tottenham Hotspur has done when they bought in um, Soldado, 28 years of age. If you buy a player of that age and he doesn't hit the ground running straight away, you've got problems because you've virtually got no resale value. So if you look at Soldado at the moment over there at Tottenham, they pay, paid, was it, £27 million for him. He's been a disaster since he's come in. It hasn't happened for him. But if he'd have been a young player, um, like, say, Lamella that they've got, they could you know, maybe get back a lot of their money or they can have a bit more patience to hang on to him. But in the case of Soldado, how much money would they get for him now? The 27 million they bought for him, they'd be lucky to get 10 million. So you really got to be careful when you buy a player of that sort of age. He's got to be a proven player. You've got to think to yourself that he's got to come in and hit the ground running. And would Carlos Baca do that? It would definitely be a risk. Let's take a look at um, a few of the comments from you guys um, from uh, yesterday. Um, and once again, thanks for the comments. I mean, we've just been getting thousands of comments from you guys on, on the transfers. I know that everybody's really pumped um, and, and would love to see, um, you know, some great transfers coming into us all this season. I asked you yesterday about Lacazette. What did you think of Lacazette? Do you think that Lacazette is a type of player that Arsenal should be going out there to buy? Um, Rohan Sharma said, um, Lacazette is a must-buy, he said. Um, for the French um, player, he said he's only age 24. Um, Ledi OG said, um, Lacazette will be a risk to buy, just like every signing. He has the potential to be world-class, um, but he has to prove it. Um, Peter Feng said, I think Lacazette will be a good signing for any club. Um, some doubts, some doubt him because he doesn't have Premier League experience and because he's only had one good season. But Leon are renowned to develop players, he says. So he, again, that's another one um, saying, let's get Lacazette. Andre Ben says, Lacazette will be a decent acquisition. He's young and on the rise and there's no better place for an up-and-coming striker than at Arsenal, given Arsene Wenger's uh, stellar record on um, bringing through players. Richard Phipps still thinks, um, goes for Jackson Martinez. He says, Martinez is the man that we need up top. Um, he's proved himself on the big stage against Bayern and he's a great finisher. So um, he, he favours him. Nathan Tuffy, however, he says, listen, we've got to get Benzema, he said. He's world-class. He may not be the quickest, but he loves to run in, in behind and he will make Ozil's game even better. That's a, that's a great point. Um, another person here is uh, Sandel 7 k He says, I want Royce most of all. <laughs> I mean, there's still the, the Royce um, fan club out there. Lots of people still in for Royce. And I have to say the general consensus from you guys was let's get Lacazette. It's a no-brainer go out there and get him. As I said yesterday, the, 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 the question I posed and my sort of doubts is only is he very expensive and he's only really done it for one season. He's, he's a bit like the Harry Kane, you know, dare I say. I'm saying a lot of Tottenham things today, ain't I? But he's a bit like the Harry Kane of French football. You know, he's had this breakthrough season where he's just scored goal after goal after goal. Um, is he a one-season wonder or is he worth the money? And that he's a player that you will turn from like very good into world class. That's the question for the Arsenal board. Um, and will they shelve out that sort of money? I know one thing, if they did do that, it'd be very, very good. And Arsenal fans would be pumped and excited going into the next season. You'll have to wait and see what happens. It's Transfer Daily. Thanks for watching today. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow, um, giving you the lowdown on the players that have been linked with a move to Arsenal.